We're at the Graduate Re um, Employment Conference in Leeds, and I'm with Stephen Rothberg, who's the president of collegerecruiter.com. And Stephen's just given the keynote here, um, which went down really well. Stephen, Thank you. could you give us a, a brief overview of some of the key themes that came out in your presentation? Sure. You know, what I wanted the attendees here, primarily career services, and there were some employers also from the UK, to, to understand about the US labor market is that in some ways there's a, a lot of similarities to what seems to be happening here. Um, in some ways there are a lot of dissimilarities, and what I've been learning is, is that uh, unfortunately in some ways you're, you're following our example. Uh, for example, higher tuition. Um, tuition's almost doubled in the U.S. for a typical uh, college or university student in the last 10 years, and wages are slightly down, so they're really getting squeezed. I call it the double whammy. Um, a less of ability to pay tuition, and um, about a far higher tuition to pay, and it's, it's creating a significant unemployment. A lot of students moving back in with their parents, choosing to remain unemployed rather than finding employment, because if they're unemployed, they don't have to pay their loans, um, and they can't afford to be employed in some cases. It really depends a lot on sort of who you are, where you are, what your degree is. Uh, if you're in the upper Midwest, in Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, where, um, where I'm from, from Minneapolis, you have a far greater chance of finding employment upon graduation than you're, if you're in, say, Nevada, California. If you are um, Asian, American, you are far more likely to go to college and graduate from college than if you are black or um, Hispanic or Native American. And if you are female, you are far more likely to go to college to enroll and far more likely to graduate than if you're male. So the, the unemployment problems in the U.S. are um, not at all spread evenly. They are very disproportionately hitting certain groups of, of people and um, almost having no impact at all on, on other groups. And the, the people who are really being hurt the hardest are those on the coasts, those from minorities, and those from poor households. Now we're embarking on tuition fees um, in this country. And you were talking about some very high tuition fees in the U.S. Yes. Um, now, how do you see, how do you see that playing out for, for graduates and their employment prospects? Yeah, you know the the average four year school, the average university undergraduate degree in um, in the U.S. runs a, somewhere in um, between fifty to one hundred thousand dollars per student. Um, I have three kids and they're all, um, as we like to say in Minnesota, they're, they're all above average. And so for our family, if we didn't have any kind of financial aid at all, we'd probably be looking at half a million dollars to send our kids just to four-year schools. My wife and I both have graduate degrees, so we'd be looking at like a million dollars to educate the three of our kids. We don't have anywhere close to that kind of money, and there are a lot of families in, in our uh, situation. I. I think it's awful, absolutely awful, the amount of money that we're charging people to complete their degrees. This, this isn't 1940, this isn't 1880, where a high school degree qualified you to do virtually any kind of a job where you could have a very good um, middle or even upper middle class lifestyle being you know, on, on a production line. If you want to live a, a good middle class life, upper middle class life in the US, and I think the same would be this case in the UK, moving forward 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you're going to have to have a degree. You're going to have to have a higher education degree. And yet if we price those degrees at $100,000, very few people will be able to afford that. So we're making it more important for people to have higher education degrees and less possible. So I, I really hope that the UK um, chooses to be smarter than, than we have in the US. Stephen Rothberg, thank you very much. Thank you much, Martin.